everyone, it's me again bringing you another video this week. As you can see from the title, it's going to be about the USMLE Step 1 and everything that you need to know about the exam as a foreign medical student. I know as a foreign medical student it can be confusing at times, there is a lot of information on the USMLE website, but when it comes to your admissions at your school and other people at your school, they might not be able to give you the answers that you're looking for. I know for me, all I really knew was that it was a really important exam and the info that I read on the website, but it was hard to get a lot of specific questions answered and I didn't know a lot of people who were in upper years ahead of me who may have taken the exam or at that time I didn't really know any students um, who were even in the states taking the USMLE exam. So hopefully this video will be useful for you in that respect and answer some of the questions that maybe you've been dying to know or that you at least should know the answers to. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the first question. Uh, also disclaimer, I'm gonna have my little iPad pad here is cheat sheet because I have a lot of stuff written down because there's a lot of stuff that I want to share with you guys so I hope you don't mind but if I'm looking down this is what I'm looking at. Okay so question number one what are the USMLE exams? So as you probably already know but for clarity's sake USMLE stands for the United States Medical Licensing Examinations. There are three parts to them. You have the USMLE Step 1, which is taken after your second year typically, the USMLE Step 2, which is taken at the end of your third year typically, and the USMLE Step 3, which is usually taken in residency. Okay, so Step 1 is a 280 question, 8 hour long, multiple choice question exam. And it tests all the theoretical knowledge that you will have learned in the first two years of medical school, so your first four semesters and in the American medical uh, school system is typically known as like the basic sciences. So this is all the theoretical information that you're going to be learning in your lectures like anatomy and biochem and physiology and stuff like that. And there's no um, really practical information because you haven't learned any of that yet, at least if you're in a Caribbean med school or in the American medical school system. Then you have the step two, which is broken into two parts. So you have the step two CK, which stands for clinical knowledge. So that tests your uh, clinical theoretical knowledge learned in your uh, third year core rotations. And then you also have the step two CS, which is clinical skills, which is a practical case simulation exam where you have someone basically um, testing you as you come into the patient room and you do a patient history workup, all that stuff. And the step two CK part is 318 questions, I believe, multiple choice again. And then as, as I said, the clinical skills, you know, that's not multiple choice questions, so you just have a bunch of patients throughout the day, and I'm not sure exactly how many uh, you're gonna have to see. Then lastly, you have the step three, which is usually taken in residency, and that is a 413 or 418 multiple choice question exam that lasts over two days, I think. And then it is also accompanied with case simulations. Okay, next question. When do Caribbean med students take the step one? So, and this is specific to Caribbean med students because there are IMGs all throughout the world and this is different because Caribbean med students are typically following the same system that the American med students follow. So you will take the USMLE step one after you finish what we call the basic sciences, which like I mentioned before, are your first four semesters or your first four or five semesters of medical school that tests all the, um, or where you learn all the theoretical stuff in class and all the lectures, so like anatomy, physiology, and all that stuff. So typically studying for the step one marks a transition from the Caribbean island that your campus might have been on for the first two years to the USA because most students actually go to, to the United States to study for their step one uh, before clinicals start. And at most Caribbean schools, you will not be able to start your third year clinical rotations until you take and pass the step one exam. I know there are some exceptions to this and I have met some people who are able to start their clinicals before taking the step one. Um, but for the most part, I think that they want you to be well qualified and uh, you've taken all that and gotten it out of the way before you're actually seeing and touching patients, which kind of makes sense. And so the third question flows right off of that. When do non-Caribbean medical students take the step one? So if you are going to school or you're attending a medical school in the UK or India or somewhere else in the world and you want to eventually move to the United States and practice as a physician and the first part of that is taking the step one, when do you take it? So that really depends on what country you're studying in and what your program is like and mainly what the timeline is for your program because in some countries med school is five or six years straight out of high school and so the way you learn things and the amount of time that it takes you to learn those things is very different than the way the American system is structured. 
So I don't know anyone personally who is a non-Caribbean IMG to ask this question to, but as far as I um, am aware, I think you just have to know all the stuff that you need to uh, be able to take the step one. So the best way I can advise you to do that is to go online and look up the basic sciences curriculum for the American med school system and see what all those courses are and then see whether or not you've taken them and once you've taken them all then I would also either download a copy or buy a hard copy of the first aid um, step one USMLE review book and go through that to see how much of it you've covered and how much you know because that's a basic review book for step one and you're gonna need to know everything in that book. So, I mean, I would freak out if you don't know every single thing in that book because every med student who's even in the Caribbean or in the States is gonna feel that way at some point regardless because there's a ton of stuff. But as long as you've covered all the sections, because it goes by um, organ system like cardiovascular and pulmonary and then it has like the anatomy section and the physiology and all that stuff. So I think that would be a good way to determine whether or not uh, you're gonna be taking it soon. So a good way to assess your level of readiness, of course, as everyone knows, is to take a, or to purchase and take a NBME exam. So you can get them off of nbme.org, I think. I'll put the link in the description below if you've never heard of this and this is the first time you've ever thought of doing this. Um, but yeah, taking those tests is a great way because it parallels your score to what it would be as an equivalent on the step one. And, uh, and then also another thing you can do is to see how well you're doing on your QBanks. Because if you're, you know, above the 80th percentile or something on your Q bank, you're probably in a good place. If you're in the 40s, 30s, 50s even, that's probably not where you want to be. So you're going to want to be studying for a little bit longer. But again, I wouldn't focus too much on your Q bank scores um, as an indicator because they tend to be quite low in comparison to what your true exam score will be. Because of course these questions are meant to be hard, they're meant to test you. And then if you've been taking the questions for a long time, then it's going to be a, a poor representative of where you're at right now at this present moment because all of your other tests that you've taken through that QBank either weeks ago or months ago or whatever where you didn't know as much are going to be bringing your average down. So that being said, most American med students who are actually in like the American system, not IMGs, take about four to eight weeks of dedicated study time to prep for the exam. Some Caribbean med students take that amount of time and no more because uh, depending on what school you're at, they won't give you more time to study for the exam. But a lot of Caribbean med students and I think the majority of the IMG student population end up taking a lot longer. So I'm talking like five months to a year plus. And I think the maximum time that you could probably take off from your school courses would be like two years, but I'm not, again, totally sure on that. But I think the earliest that someone in my class took the STEP exam was about five months after their second year ended. Overall, I think the most important thing is that you don't underestimate how much you're actually going to have to study and don't assume that you know all the stuff you're going to need to know. Because the way that the teaching system is set up in the States and at Caribbean medical schools follows, again, the U.S. medical teaching system, whereas especially outside of the United States, um, their, their teaching system is completely different. So the way the curriculum and the courses are arranged are very different and you may not have actually even learned or been tested on at least many of the concepts that you're going to have to know for first aid. For example, a friend of mine is in her fourth year of medical school at a Canadian medical school and she decided to study for the step one so that she could apply for American fellowships later on and just kind of keep that door open. And she is uh, having a pretty difficult time because she was never really tested on any board exams uh, on any of the stuff or a lot of the stuff seen in the USMLE review books and in first aid. There's just a lot of detail that isn't required to be known or really thoroughly um, informed about uh, in medical programs throughout the world compared with uh, medical pro programs in the state. So there's a lot to know and it's very detailed and it's all down to the molecular level of things. So that takes time to learn and it takes time to remember. So just be prepared to have enough time dedicated where you don't have a job and you're not in class to actually be able to really sit down and review. So all that being said, probably the absolute minimum time that I would recommend to study for step one as an IMG would be two months. Even then, I still think that you should be taking a couple months longer than that just because it is so important to do well on the step one exam on your first try. You don't want to be failing and you don't want to be getting a low score. 
So if you can take off, um, you know, more time than the average American student just so that you can get your scores up to where they need to be, then that's important. Obviously, if it only takes you two months or a month to get your scores to be um, in a great great range on your practice exams and on the NBMEs, then disregard this, you, you'll know what to do and you probably aren't even really needing to watch this video anyway. Next question, where do I study for the step one? That just depends on your school, but for the most part, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna be studying in the States if you're a Caribbean med student because you usually leave the Caribbean island that your campus was on after your fourth or fifth semester, and then you move to the States, and you don't have to move where your clinicals are gonna be yet. Um, you can pretty much live wherever you want. I ended up living in the States for a bit and then moved back to Canada just to save money, um, and, and so you can do whatever you need to do preparing for step one pretty much wherever you you want and then once you've taken the exam I mean you might have to go somewhere to actually take the exam if they don't um, have a test center near you um, but until your clinical start you're not gonna have to be anywhere specific um, and that again will be most likely in the United States all right moving on so will not taking the MCAT affect my ability to sit or affect my eligibility to sit the USMLE exams no that is a common question that I get all the time so the only countries that actually require a person to take the MCAT and submit their scores to get into a medical school, I believe, are Canada and the United States. So the MCAT is just a tool used by the administrations at these schools essentially to weed out applicants um, and to thin out the number of people that are trying to get into a medical school. So once you're actually in medical school and your school is legitimate, then um, then, then you're in it. It doesn't. Your MCAT pretty much becomes irrelevant for the rest of your life. So I didn't take the MCAT and I just took the step one, so obviously I'm living proof that it is possible. But as long as your school is accredited by ECFMG, then you will be able to sit the step one exam. And so you can go onto the ECFMG website. I again will link that below and that's what I'm gonna be talking about in the next question. And you can find out uh, whether or not your school is accredited by ECFMG and whether or not you're, you are gonna be eligible to sit the step one or any of the step exams. But as far as your MCAT is concerned, no, that doesn't really matter. Matter. All that really relates to is actually your ability to get into a medical school in Canada or the United States. Okay, last question. What is ECFMG? So ECFMG, it's the main governing body over IMGs who want to practice medicine in the United States, essentially. And they are the administration who determines whether or not your out-of-country education makes you fit to actually take the board exams that will qualify you to be able to practice and use your education in the United States as a physician. And they are also the ones who will sponsor your visa when you want to get a residency in the United States because you're gonna have to live in the United States for that. So ecfmg.org, again, we'll link it below. Oh, they have a ton of information all about this stuff and everything uh, related to whether or not your school is accredited and what you'll have to do and can you apply and all this stuff on their website so I would highly recommend checking it out but it's a resource that not everyone knows to look for so I just wanted to put that out there so just for relevancy sake the only time that you as an IMG specifically a Caribbean medical student are going to interact directly with ECFMG is when you're applying to get your permit to actually take step one and then you'll do the same thing again Again, when you um, apply to take step two and step three, all of that is kind of channeled through the ECFMG online portal. They'll give you a username and stuff like that. And so all of your kind of certifications and stuff like that, as far as the USMLE exams go, will be directly through ECFMG. But um, you won't really have to deal with that until you actually start taking these exams. So that brings me to the end of today's video. I hope you guys liked it. I knew that I had a lot of questions when I was looking into applying for uh, international medical schools and also while I was going through my first two years of med school regarding the USMLE exams because they are a really big deal and sometimes it feels like you can't really get all the information that you want. But I really tried to um, consolidate and get in all the facts here that you really need to know and answer the questions that I wish I had someone to tell me when I was in your shoes. So um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great week and thanks so much for uh, tuning in. If you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments or shoot me an email and I'll try and get back to them as soon as I can. I do try to respond to everyone and I'm so thankful for all the sweet comments that you guys have left for me previously. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great week. Bye.